everyone and welcome back to Heartbeat. And today we have the top five most underrated guitarists. I'm Carly, that's Brendan, this is Toby, and we're at Heartbreaker Guitars in Las Vegas to bring you the top five most underrated guitarists. Carly, everybody knows Eddie Van Halen, yeah. Jimi Hendrix, Tommy Emmanuel. Yes. I mean, these are the guitar players that their names are thrown around the all legends. the time. Yeah, the legends. The gods. But what about the unsung heroes of the business? The yeah. awesome guitar players that aren't always on that top 10 That's list right. of iconic guitar players. You know what? You are so right because my favorite guitarists aren't necessarily on that list of like greats and legends, but I think they're amazing. Yeah. Yeah. And that's exactly why me and Toby that's wanted we're doing to talk this. about the underrated guitar players. Toby Top did, huh? five. <laughs> Toby, where are you going? Okay, bye. No list for you. Let's get to it. Top five most underrated guitarists. <laughs> One, two, three, four. Okay. You're first. All right. All right. <laughs> Top five. Top five. Underrated guitar players. All right, so I'm gonna start my top five. My number five is Scary Pool Party, otherwise known as Alejandro Aranda. He was on American Idol the 2019 season, and I know what you're gonna say. What the heck does American Idol have to do with guitar? I'll tell you what. He made it all the way to second place on American Idol last season, and not necessarily because of his vocals, but because of his incredible musicality, including his guitar playing. I highly recommend checking out some of his music. Is she right on the money or is she freaking crazy? Comment in the section <laughs> below. I'm not insinuating anything. Okay, my number five, top five underrated guitar player of all time is mm -hmm. Mr. Mike Campbell of Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers. Okay, okay, all right. This guy is a hit machine, and one thing about Mike Campbell, he plays for the song. He's not interested in showing off yeah. and all that, you know, fancy uh, fretboard stuff. He just plays great songs, great melodies, very musical. Mm -hmm. uh, when he wants to shred, though, he can. The guy's just okay. an all-around great musician, so Mike Campbell. I love it. All right, my number four. Now, I feel like some of my choices, you're already making the face. He's making the face. There was a face. All right, my- I haven't heard it yet. <laughs> what, who's it gonna be? My number four underrated guitarist, Taylor Swift. Taylor Swift, the country yeah. girl? Yeah. Okay. All I right. didn't know she was a shredder. Yeah, so uh, what you may not know about Taylor Swift, uh, if you are not a giant Taylor Swift fan, or maybe not even a country fan, or maybe not even a pop music fan, you might know that she started in country as a pretty accomplished guitarist. And if you look at some of her earlier videos playing at the Bluebird and places like that in Nashville, she knows what she's doing. And she still brings her guitar up on stage um, while she's touring. I mean, not right now, because it's the apocalypse, but uh, during normal touring season, she's got that guitar up there, and you can see her technique is pretty impressive. So never mind Eddie Van Halen, Taylor Swift. Taylor Swift, what's up, Swifties? Okay, so can I give you my number four now? Please, yes. Okay. This one, I think, I'm sorry to say, I think I nailed this one. Okay. And I've chosen so the edge. it's not edge. Taylor Swift. The Edge from U2. Okay. Okay, and let me tell you why. Okay. okay. Um, I, and most guitar players will agree, The Edge is not a technically gifted player. All right. He is known for his effects, his layers of tracks and sonic sounds that you don't hear in any other band. He's like just it. so creative. And yeah. um, it's a really, it's a, it's a recognizable sound. Like it is, it is. I mean, you, yeah. you, you hear U2, you usually can pull out Edge's yeah. guitar playing. But um, like I said, he just creates incredible melodies, incredible tones. Again, not quite technical. Right. But who cares about that if it sounds great, right? Right. You know? Yeah, no. So I'm going with the edge for that reason. Okay. The edge? Let's Number three. Five, four, three. Okay. Now this one I think may start a little bit of controversy in the comments. I don't know. You may agree. You may wildly disagree. Um, it took a little bit of time to kind of get the right information on this. And there is a lot of contradictory information on the interwebs. Uh, it also doesn't help that this person is, uh, you know, dead and uh, is not making music anymore. I'm going to go with my number three, Kurt Cobain. Oh, Kurt yeah. Cobain, guitar player. Right, okay. okay, yeah. So some of you are going, huh, yeah. And some of you are going, what? 
So I obviously grew up with Nirvana, um, and a lot of people are posting about a one specific Nirvana song lately because of the new Batman trailer. Mm -hmm. So the new Batman trailer came out, uh, and it has in it a, a version of Something in the Way. That song, obviously uh, originally a Nirvana song, I kind of went in and looked at the tuning of it to see how he played it originally, and it's sort of interesting, and it brought me to a couple different, almost opposing thoughts. The song was written in E flat drop D, which is a sort of bizarre tuning, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but it was done to make the chord playing easier. Mm -hmm. So it led me to believe maybe he wasn't just like not good at guitar. That sort of led me to believe that he did have a, an understanding of music theory and uh, the guitar itself, and maybe he was just lazy. <laughs> So I think he was an underrated guitarist. Some people are gonna go, no way, the guy was high all the time, uh, it wasn't good at all. But I think if we go back and look at some of the times he was playing live on stage, again, not incredibly technical, but I think his his actual understanding of music theory did come out on stage. Yeah, and you know what, you make a great point. Um, I mean, let look at the sales of Nirvana's albums. Right. I mean, he wrote great songs. So, I mean, what is what are we going to use as the um, the measuring stick for a great guitar player? Is it somebody who is incredibly technical? Right. I think not. Yeah. If you feel that way, if you think Steve Vai is the man, I love Steve Vai. Well, yeah. But I can't listen to Steve Vai for three hours straight. Right. And people are going to go, Steve Vai is great, but was he all technique and no soul? Like that's the thing I hear all the time. Is like, yeah, he was incredible, but I don't get like. Yeah. The feels. From yeah. It, so I, I mean, I, I I agree with you. Um, I mean, Kurt Cobain wrote great songs. Yeah. And um, like I said, technically gifted, maybe not. No. But I don't know that I that matters. Think. What do yeah. you guys think? Yeah. Okay. All so right. we're still on number three. Oh, number three. Still, I know. I talked for a while. Okay. I had a lot of thoughts on that. I'm going back to <laughs> Brian May. Okay. And I'm choosing I'll Brian May for one reason and one reason only tone. Brian okay. May has the most recognizable tone perhaps in rock. He's also got one of the most iconic guitars in rock that he built with his father um, out of a fireplace, yeah, which I think so is cool. so, cool. That's so, so cool. Anyway, Brian May, Queen, that's my number three. Oh, okay, that's a hard one to beat. But if we're going underrated, that sometimes means that people don't even know that they play guitar. So for my number two, I'm bringing you Post Malone. This is what happens when you let me make my own choices. <laughs> Why? Post Malone. Why am I doing this to you, right? Okay, Post Malone is actually an incredible guitarist. A lot of people don't know that. He does play on stage. He's uh, played with a lot of incredible bands that you probably know about. But he started actually in a metal band, a metalcore band named Ashley's Arrival when he was a teenager, and then moved on to playing acoustic guitar and played mostly country. Really? Yeah, he would do acoustic gigs at a local Italian restaurant, played mostly country, uh, learned how to play guitar starting off with Guitar Hero, got a real guitar, went from there. Um, he also plays the banjo, which is pretty cool. And every single uh, live performance that he does, he does an acoustic set and plays his guitar. And there you have it. Yeah. Post Malone. Okay, my number two. Okay, let's do it. Alex Lifeson of Rush. Okay. Um, I think he is one of the, gosh, I hate, to, I hate to use the term unsung hero of Rush because they kind of all are. They're I mean, Neil Peart is Neil Peart. He's the man. <laughs> um, Getty Lee's just, he's off the chain. But Alex Lifeson, I don't think necessarily stands out in that band Rush as kind of the, the, the best musician, the leader, whatever you want to call right. it. Right. He, uh, he's just awesome. And because it's such a small band, there's only yeah. three of them, it's kind of hard to stand out. Especially yeah, totally. when you're amongst these monster musicians, yeah, yeah, yeah. Neil Peart and uh, Getty Lee. That's totally so, true. for that reason, Alex Lifeson. I like that one. I like that choice. All right. Are we to our are number, number one? one? Number one. Ah! Let's okay. do it. So uh, my number one, this person is very accomplished in music, but I feel like... Underrated guitarist. I'm gonna go with Prince. Oh, excellent choice. Prince is my excellent number one. Excellent choice. Yeah, so everybody knows Prince. Uh, incredible pop musician, incredible vocalist, incredible songwriter. But what a lot of people don't know is he actually played every single instrument on his debut album. It was 27 different instruments and he played wow. them for that record. So he is not only just a vocalist and a performer, but he's a shredder, man. You know was. one thing I love about Prince? <laughs> 
he is a very capable guitar player, yeah. no doubt. But one thing cool about Prince is his style. Oh yeah. The manner in which he plays the guitar, it's yes. like nobody else. Oh, and no. I've never heard another guitar player talk about style other than maybe Steve Vai. I've heard him talk a lot about it. He says it's not just what you play, right. but it's how you play it's like it. A, he dances with that guitar. Like he does stuff to that guitar. Yeah. If you so. guys go back and watch that uh, famous video of Prince playing that solo during While My Guitar Gently Weeps with all those at the oh. Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, was it? That literally, gave, like just now I got chills. Like thinking about it. like no joke did. Uh, and, and that's what I mean about style. Just the, yeah. the way he holds, the way he moves his hands around. Yeah. I mean, the guy is just cool. Like he, he's just cool. It's one of those people where you watch it and you're like that he knows every millimeter of that fret. He knows that entire guitar. Like he is one with that guitar. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Great so that's choice. It. My number one, Prince. Great choice. Ready for my number one? I'm ready. Give it to me. Anybody who knows me knows I'm gonna choose this guy. Okay, I His think name's I... Lindsey Buckingham of yeah. Fleetwood Mac. Yes. Lindsey Buckingham is the heart and soul of Fleetwood Mac. A lot of people don't know, but he arranged and produced, well, he was a co-producer, but he mostly arranged a lot of the songs on the, the famous Rumors album. Oh, interesting. And, um, you know, he's responsible for putting all those Stevie Nick hits together. Yeah. I mean, she would come to him with a song that was in tatters and he was the one who would put and it all together like, for her. Business. Yeah. So cool. And you don't hear about Lindsey Buckingham being a great guitar player, especially back in the 70s and 80s because he played for the song, you know, it was all about the song. Right. But he always had this talent and this ability and um, in the early 90s, I think it was the early 90s, Fleetwood Mac came out with this video, a live video called The Dance. And I think that video which got a Grammy, Grammy nomination, really exposed Lindsay's guitar playing and his virtuosity yeah. um, on that incredible Rick Turner Model 1 yes, guitar. Yes, the Model and, 1. Um, so anyway, I, I, I love Lindsay Buckingham. He is a master, and I, I don't think he gets his due. Yeah, I think so, you're right. Lindsay Absolutely. Buckingham. That's a good one. That's a really good one. Thank you. Nice. Okay, did you have any... Uh... Honorable mentions? Yeah, did you? Uh, I did. Um, I like. I had Prince as an honorable mention. Okay, well that so makes yeah. That's, I agree that's with good. you 100% yeah. on that. And the <laughs> other one I was going to mention is Boston, um, one okay. of my favorite bands of all time. Um, Tom Schultz is a genius, and um, so that would be my honorable nice. mention. Nice. How about you? Uh, I did. I stuck with my five because I felt like people were already going to be upset enough with that, so I left it at my five. So what's your top five underrated yes. guitarists of all time, guys? Tell us in the comments section. If we're full of it, tell us that too. Are we crazy? I know I'm not full of it, but I, if I, you guys <laughs> want to get critical of Carly's choices, please do. Come at me. Yeah, or maybe don't. Don't at me. <laughs> no, I feel, I feel good about my, my picks. I do too. Do you feel good about them? What do you all think? Give us your list. Okay, guys, right. this was Heartbeat. That's Carly. I'm Brendan. Toby's on break. Somewhere. Thanks for watching. All right. See you guys next time. Bye.